Even if football is locked down in your country, you might still be lucky enough to be able to go to a pitch and train on your own. But how do you build a good, effective individual training session that you're still gonna get something out of so you can actually still improve as a football player? That is what I'm gonna teach you today. So you can still go out there, train, and be max ready for when football, and I guess the whole world, opens up again. Let's do it. So what we're going to focus on today is how you build individual training sessions, not little drills and all that stuff. Because we've made a ton of videos on all these different drills that you can use to improve your shooting and your touch and your passing. So instead, I'm going to give you a blueprint of how you can build your training sessions and then I'll basically let you guys decide between all the different drills that you can combine and put together based on what you'd like to do. And then I'll also teach you what you need to focus on when you do individual training sessions such, for instance, making it as match relevant as you possibly can. So first things first, warm up. And yes, it's boring. But what's even more boring is to be able to do nothing, especially play football, because you screwed up. You ignored the warm up and then you got injured then you can't play football. You want to avoid that. Guys, I'll be honest, I really don't care how you warm up. Just go out there, make sure you warm up the entire body, get your muscles flexible, stretch out, so your body is ready to do whatever you're going to do in the training session. So start slow, use some cones, then increase the intensity, and then go and stretch out before you go into the drills. Of course, if you're in good shape, you can use the intense part of the warm-up to do a little bit of fitness or cardio work. But again, I don't care how you do it, just get warm. Then when you're warm, I would work on my touch, my control and my dribbling. And to start off, I would basically get a few cones or obstacles and do what we call ball mastery, which 7MLC has taught you a lot of individual drills to improve on. Of course, he's a lot better than I am with the ball at his feet because he's done a lot of them. But basically, it's about going in and really getting used to working with the ball in little spaces, making a lot of repetitions. Just get friendly with the ball, you know, train that close control, the touch, until you feel like you're ready to go into something a little bit more advanced with the ball at your feet. Then I would probably move over to an actual dribbling course where you put out some cones or socks, basically obstacles that you can weave around at speed and get used to making all these little directional changes and cuts and turns and weave in between obstacles because the more you get used to actually going in different directions with the ball at your feet, the easier it's gonna be in a match. And speaking of matches, the more match relevant you can make this, the better. So. Maybe start with the ball at the end of the dribbling course and sprint to it from the other side of the course just to get the pulse up and make it a little bit more difficult. Or if you have something you can bounce the ball off, then do that. Get it back, turn, and then go down. You can start the dribbling course here. Because again, the more you get used to actually moving, passing, receiving the ball, turning, and then weaving in between obstacles, the more ready you're gonna be to do it in a match. So you make your mind ready. So basically, in order to improve your touch and control, do some ball mastery drills and then a dribbling course, and you can move on. Then we move on to passing, and I realize that passing can be a little bit difficult when you're on your own, but there's a workaround to that, because if you can find a wall or something that will bounce the ball back to you with reasonable pace, that's something you can work with. So I'd also split the passing part in two. I would go out up to the wall, basically pass it, receive it, take a directional touch at the end of it, pass it back, directional touch back where you came from, and so forth, until you feel that your passing is on point. Then, to make it a bit more match relevant, as I talked so much about, you want to set up a passing course where you basically pass the ball at the wall, you move around the cone, you get the ball, turn around, round another cone, and either pass it short or long to get that precision on point. 
But of course, this is just one of many drills. We've made so many different ones you can choose from. So go in and decide which passing drill you want to do on that specific day. It's all about making it match relevant, guys. Remember that. Of course, if you're any sort of attacking player, you might also want to do some shooting drills, which is good because they're also the most fun. But don't just take 20 odd balls, run around randomly shooting the ball at goal. It's not going to teach you anything. Instead, you guessed it, make it as match relevant as you possibly can. Set up some different scenarios that forces you to use different shooting techniques with different parts of your feet from different positions all around the box. The most important thing is that you put yourself under pressure. I've made tons of little drills that can improve your shooting drastically and that are actually pretty easy. But if it's too easy, just shooting at an empty goal and you don't have a goalkeeper, well, you can put a seven aside goal into the full size goal here and just pressure yourself into hitting those little areas around the seven aside goal. Again, put yourself under pressure because the better you are at slotting home under pressure, the easier it's gonna be in a match. And you're gonna score more goals and everybody wins. You're welcome. So by now, you've probably gathered that the secret to a good individual training session is to make it as match-like as you possibly can. Train the way you play. So I have three things I want to highlight. The first thing is to look around you, orientate yourself before and after you get the ball. And it's really stupid because there's no one around you. You're all alone on the pitch. You only have the cones. But just before you take the ball, just look. Where are the cones? Which way can I turn? Where's the empty space? It's gonna be a lot easier. Secondly, when you pass the ball in a match, what do you do? Well, hopefully you move out of your position into empty space to make yourself available. And you should do the same even when you train on your own. And finally, and this is even more stupid, I need you to communicate because hopefully you also do that in a match. So when you pass the ball to a target, call out a name. It could be Jeff. Oh, uh, yes. Jeff, here's the pass coming to you. Because if you wire all of these three things into your brain when you train alone, you're also going to do them in a match. And honestly, do you think CR7 cared about looking stupid on the pitch when he was training alone? No! And he's one of the best players ever, so... Shouldn't care. So there you have it, my friends. A blueprint on how you can build a training session so you can train and improve as a footballer on your own. Now remember that this is just a guide and a blueprint on how you can build your individual training sessions where you can basically customize it to your needs by using some of the many football drills that you can find in the playlist right down there. Now, of course, before you go and check that out, don't forget that if you need new football boots, such as the lovely Mizuno Morelia Neo 3 Beta Japans or every other piece of football gear you might need, well, you can find it on the link to unisportsdoor.com right over there. Of course, also, don't forget to go subscribe to the channel with the notifications on and then just jump out there, go train and improve so you're ready for when football finally comes back. And with those words, guys, I'll be signing off. Cheerio.